Ohio approved and licensed for disposal. At Ron Evans Enterprises, they specialize in sewage system installation and repair. Ron Evans has a full line of flex pipe, culverts, concrete, and plastic septic tanks, sewer fittings, water line rolls for the home American water heaters, along with toilets, standard, and ADA. It's all at Ron Evans Enterprise LLC. Give them a call today at 1 800 537 9528 or 740 286 5930. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. everyone and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV where we had the same guest yesterday. Hello everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks for having me back so soon. Hey yes of course no listen it just happenstance but no so we joked with you yesterday that you wear very 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 many hats. Um, our good friend John Stabler is here and so yesterday you were here on the show with your a uh, Cub, Cub Scout, Scout Boy Scout hat on, and today you're here with your other job. With one of my other jobs, it's <laughs> yeah, the land bank hat. hat. <laughs> so yes, so yeah, with the Jackson County Land Reutilization Corporation, or Land Bank for short. I was gonna say we'll just stick with Land. Land Bank so much easier. How, how about we go <laughs> go with that? Okay, so you actually are part of um, the economic development yeah. uh, partnership now, right? So tell us, if you would, and we should have made Sam come in here too, but that's okay because you're here. <laughs> we have just John. Um, but uh, tell us about the Economic Development Partnership and then tell us a little bit about how the land bank kind of fits into that situation. Okay, so um, I work, my primary job is I'm a development specialist for the Jackson County uh, Economic Development Partnership, another mouthful. Um, yes. So we like to just say the partnership. Um, but, okay. Uh, the partnership, um, our focus is um, helping to um, sustain and uh, expand job opportunities in Jackson County and uh, working with um, all of our businesses in the county, especially our, our industrial businesses, and helping them to um, expand their opportunities and their, and their reach uh, to help them with opportunities for uh, improved uh, marketing and things of that nature. Yeah. And we do that through a series of things, whether it be uh, incentives from the state, whether it be um, opportunities through the county or from one of our regional partners. Um, we're also, because uh, we're part of the Ohio Valley uh, Regional Development Commission, or OVRDC. Okay. Uh, but we're also part of JEDISO, which is a four-county uh, region that we focus on um, that helps us to um, market the way we are here. And that's made up of Jackson, uh, Pike, Scioto, and Ross counties. And we work as a, as a district together, and we work to help find funding for those um, economic opportunities here. Absolutely, because, you know, the old term, like, it takes a village. Sometimes, <clears throat> you know, you have two counties working together on one project or four counties working together on one project. Or, you know, it takes a little bit from here and a little bit from there to, to work together. So it's amazing that you all have, have that relationship well, and we can hit so much harder if because. You would move that oh, sorry. Too, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. There so, um, with with us, I mean, we have thirty four thousand people here in Jackson County. Yes. But 
if we can be part of the Jadiso region, and then we're coming with um, a hundred, what is it, one hundred and forty-five, one hundred and fifty thousand people, bit bigger so we have population. a bigger reach. Or if we're part of the OVRDC and and that um, ten county region, I mean, it w- gives us more of a, an ability to have a harder punch. Uh, we also work with Ohio Southeast, who has a twenty-five yes. county region. Um, Ohio Southeast, I mean, has has been. Um, in several of our, our news stories and some of our wins that we've worked together with. Yes, them. they're and amazing. So it, it's fantastic to be able to pull and to use those resources and to speak with one voice. Um, speaking with that that one bigger voice helps us to make a big difference. And that's kind of what the state did with our land bank uh, work. They realized, hey, wait a minute, we've got a lot of uh, older properties that are pulling down property values that are doing. So let's reach out and create this fund to help every county in the state of Ohio to make an impact. And so they they uh, have given, an, and 24 is going to be our last round in, in, of, of funding. Okay. But it's been about a half a million dollars every year for the last uh, four years. Uh, well, last three years, the uh, 24 will be our, our fourth year. And so right now we're up to about a, a million and a half dollars that we've been able to put into renovating and cleaning up neighborhoods. And so it's one of those things is how, how do we hit that at a bigger punch? So the state of Ohio was looking and saying, okay, we're doing this. We've been very um, blessed in Jackson County that um, our bids have all come in lower, so we've been able to do more. Oh, wow. <coughs> that doesn't we, happen. No, that, that, that was, that's, <laughs> yeah, that has Ever? not been one of those things that, that has been a likely circumstance. But last year uh, we had, um, because we had a, one project that had some, some match, so we were at, um, what was it, we were at a $800,000 worth of projects, ended up coming in way under. So now we've got another 36 that we're finishing up and getting ready to bid out now in regards to that. So we've been able to, to spread that work around to a lot of our uh, local contractors as well as some regional contractors as well. And uh, they, they've done a phenomenal job for us. And that's yeah. We, now we've got neighborhoods where people are like, hey, um, can you take a look at this one? <laughs> can you see if somebody right, can help because, here? Well, because you see the the fruits of the of the labor, you know, and the benefits of that. Yeah, and, and so now the state of Ohio has started the Welcome Home Ohio grant. Um, so we're oh. going to we're, the land bank is now uh, we've applied to build two homes, and we're actually um, wanting to not necessarily transition completely out from this, but we want to look at how do we make these neighborhoods better? How do we help our our communities um, and creating taxpayers, creating utility customers, and adding those extra utility customers will help in the long run to to even out uh, costs. So um, instead of just selling a property for a side lot, we have the ability to um, put a house on that property and make it uh, much more beneficial to our tax base. It also increases the one thing that we've been very short on, which is um, workforce housing in, in that that 150 to 180 range. You're not kidding. So, um, and what many of the realtors that we've talked to is, if you sell a house in that 150 to 180 range, it's not going to be on the the market very long uh, it, because people it, are looking for. It will those. be gone as fast as it gets put up. And so, one of the things that we're hoping with this grant is once we we verify our properties, once we get our houses, uh, we. We verify which which house we're putting it on the parcel. Uh, we can go ahead and market that and start getting people to apply. Because with the Welcome Home Ohio, there are a few stipulations that um, are going to be there. It has to be single-family housing residents mm-hmm. for 20 years. Um, and that is enforceable by the Department of Development. So it is a covenant that will be on that deed for 20 years. Okay. Um, with, so it helps us to make sure that um, it will be – for a, for a homeowner, so it's going to have somebody who's going to have that buy-in. So like a landlord isn't going so to buy it. It, it what can't, cannot be a rental. Yeah. Um, now, one thing I thought was really interesting is after five years, you're allowed to rent one room in the house. Uh, but I guess that has been a, more of a thing in more urban areas. Well, it is so. because you're talking about, um, yes, more urban areas. You're talking about an Airbnb situation or yeah. you're talking about that kind of thing so, where people... Uh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, so it's allowed that allowed that to happen. So that's one of those things that is kind of kind of nice, um, and so it does give them a 
a help if they've had kids, they have older kids, and they end up moving out after after a while. They maybe can do something with that spare bedroom. Yeah, and I think a lot of, you know, especially empty nesters, for example, are like, hey, we've got this ginormous house. We may as well... Let's do something with it. Yeah, and, and plus it's company. Yeah, and well, for them too. One of the things is with um, the, so the county, one of the other hats uh, on the tourism side of things, mm-hmm. we're start. We have our new um, Jackson County Board of Tourism. We are starting to focus and figure out how we're going to market um, Jackson County and how we're going to make it so that um, we can show the folks here what resources we have because there's things that people have and they're like never knew that was there. Yeah. Um, there is, we've got a historical marker, um, down in the diamond area for, um, it was a civil war training, uh, camp, uh, wow. for the, I think 58th, vol- uh, Ohio volunteer infantry never knew about it. Uh, and then I'm like, well, goodness gracious, there are civil war buffs that love to go to those areas. Right. And, uh, even though you may not see any remnants of what was there, um, there are things that we can do, um, virtually so that people can go there they can have we we have a marker that that's going to be available we can have it so that they can say hey here's what this is i was there and with and with these yeah and and so with these opportunities um we've got um the well it's commonly known as the bed tax uh so it's yes. it's going to cover airbnbs yes. hotels cabins campgrounds and all those things which that's so, a relatively new um yes Came about, thing. yeah, it came about, um, was approved in January, and will go into effect April 1st. Um, That's a countywide. And that'll be countywide. Uh, so Jackson's always had that. City of Jackson has had one for 30-ish years, 25-ish, yeah. 30-ish years. That sounds right. Um, but at the time that they did it, the county didn't have one and wasn't willing to put one on at that time. And um, the, I, I'm very proud of our commissioners. They were, they're, they're, being very forward thinking and saying, hey, wait a minute. Uh, right now we rank 88 out of 88 counties. And I know we're on a different topic, so I apologize. <laughs> we're 88 out of 88 counties uh, for tourism in the state of Ohio. Uh, we are dead last. Which makes absolutely uh, no sense. Especially with what we have and oh where gosh. we are in regards to other things. Yeah. Um, so one of the things is we want to see if we can draw folks here um, so that they're in our Airbnbs, they're in our restaurants, they're shopping at our at our facilities, and then going out and using us as a hub. They'll go out and go to a hike here. They'll go out and visit a site here. They'll go out and do this here. And with the the recent UNESCO uh, World Heritage Designation for uh, our mound system in Ohio, it's really enhancing what we have. We are along the Underground Railroad Trail. We're an adjacent county to um, projects that are going on uh, along the river in relation to Underground Railroad and uh, oh, things of that nature. So, me. And we've got some sites in Jackson County that folks, like, that was here? I never knew about that. Or there used to be, um, just outside of Berlin Crossroads, there used to be a college uh, for, for blacks that no one has really known a whole lot about and what? we and we haven't promoted it. I've never um, heard of that. So, uh, uh, oh uh, shoot, brain, come on work. It, um, oh darn it, I'm trying to think of, of his name and I can't think of it right now. But uh, one of Thomas Jefferson's slaves had had come here and that's where he had had a college. So uh, Woodson. So, really. Uh, and so one of the things and so that's um, things that we're not promoting that we could promote. Sure. Uh, folks that were up in where that property is, like yeah, part some of those uh, foundations are still up there. That um, is so cool. But it just not a whole lot was known about that. So um, we've got the Morgan's Raid route. That oh yeah, that's here. a ginormous and thing. With everything, we there are actually a number of mounds here in Jackson County that are related to the same mound system, um, but we have not. Uh, preserved as many of them. Now we do have one uh, down at the James Cemetery that's there. It is an ancient mound, and so we've so got all this that we can we can do. We when you, you say mounds, you're talking about like Native American Native, bar- Native American burial, burial. Mounds. right? So that one that is in Wait, James Cemetery. Is, James is the one on Broadway. Uh, or no? Yes. Yeah. Down. So yeah, down by Jamestown. So down by by the market down there. Wait. There's there's, there's a, a ma- yeah. There's a mound right in the middle of that cemetery. 
So there's what? a yeah, there's a there's a native now these mounds were not always burial mounds. Some of them were ceremonial, some of them were uh, just gathering mounds. But yeah, there's a mound directly in the middle of that c- cemetery if you pay attention. So it's it's one of those things you see it and you don't think about it. And that's what some of the stuff has been here for so long that it's just commonplace for for us and we don't realize the significance of it. Yeah. And so trying to uh, encourage folks to realize there's far more to Jackson County than what we always than what we give it to. Uh, we've got um, the Welsh Heritage uh, site down in uh, or down in Oak Hill. They have Absolutely. got the oldest Welsh Heritage Museum in all of North America, uh, but we don't talk about that. We don't. It's not promoted as much. Sure. Um, so how do we do that? How do we? Plus, address they'll that? have the world's largest acorn. And they're going to have the world's largest Hello. acorn. Hello. Uh, so, and actually, that is going to be on the Ohio Arts Trail as well. That's so. Cool. We okay. it is now going to be part of an official <laughs> Ohio Trail. Um, so it, it's very exciting that things that we could have been and should have been doing for many years um, haven't come into play. Um, so just like with hopping back to the land bank. Yeah, um, no, this is fun because we're talking <laughs> about a whole lot of different things, but making people aware of things. Yeah, So and, and so with the land bank is we've got folks who have lived here that and some of them, many of them are living in rentals. We've got a very large uh, rental industry here in, in Jackson yeah. County. Um, some landlords are phenomenal. Some need a little bit of need a little bit of help in showing TLC to their properties. Yeah, um, we've got folks that would like to um, to move up and to move into something of their own, and if the land bank can can be one of those avenues, um, and if we can encourage um, work within that community to to move on, like there's some properties um, in Wellston. There's probably uh, one area that has probably I think what is it about 85 to 90 parcels that has does has no utilities no roads right now um, but the city was like hey wait a minute this would be fairly simple especially where this is um, this um, so I know the city of Wilson has been very forward thinking in regards to uh, well, a lot of things address but... well but especially addressing their utilities yeah they've been working very hard at that for the last probably eight years now um, and is, has gone into to overdrive the last yeah. uh, four or five years. And um, several of the things that had been talked about years ago are, are finally coming to fruition. So having that, yeah, they, they had to deal with a big leak, um, but it helped them to, to fix some things recently. I mean, they, they lost over a million gallons of water during that day. Yeah. But now um, they were able to, to, to fix some of those major issues, and they realized they, they're going to, they applied for another grant to replace about another 1,200 feet of, of water line that is a major water source in Wellston. They have a generational project going on with the new water plant that's going to be built, and with that, um, they'll have capacity to serve far above what they're able to yes. in a much more efficient manner. <laughs> That's <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, the, that North Water Plant is over 90 years old. Oh, my so, gosh. Um, and have been, having been in that North Water Plant, uh, it's like, oh, it, it would... Aww. Lots, of, <laughs> lots has needed sad. to be done with that. So, But, I mean, it was phenomenal for when it was built. Yes. Um, so now... Um, working to have a, a state-of-the-art uh, facility that can better serve not only uh, Wellston, but the surrounding areas is, is a huge thing. The city of Jackson's doing amazing things with extending water and sewer lines. We're looking at, um, on a countywide, what can we do to extend water and sewer service further out into the county? Um, we've got Jackson County Water that's doing all kinds of, of work with mm-hmm. uh, water line. It's not cheap. Um, no. To extend that, especially so with sewer. But if we can get Oak Hill to, to move um, south and north to extend areas, it, it creates even greater um, industrial and commercial and residential opportunities. Right. And the same thing with Wilson and Jackson. Where Where is their growth going to be in the next 10, 20 years? And so that's part of what economic development is is hoping to try to help guide and to encourage as well is where are we on this long-term plan? What are we doing? The city of Jackson's got, um, they're, they're doing some major uh, work with major sewer lines and those replacements and how it better serves 
um, the, the, the wastewater plant as well as its customers. So the, the project here um, on, on uh, Main Street is, is going to be a big opportunity to help um, all of the, this area that we have. And they're, they're almost doubling that size and making it a, a new line instead of one that's almost 40 years old. Okay, and so, when when is that project? I believe it's later this summer. Okay, if if everything works out well. So. And here's the thing, you know, and we've talked about this here on the show. Number one, all of the things that we're talking about today, it may seem like <laughs> jumping around, sure. but they all no, they all tie together. Yeah, everything it's ties a, in. It's a and, trickle down, and trust us, we understand that Columbia Gas tearing up all of Jackson, Ohio, <laughs> for the past couple of years has been. Annoying pain. to say the least, where streets are closed and people use lose their yards for a little bit and all of that, but it's all part of the bigger picture, which is keeping our infrastructure up to date. And so those water lines in Wellston, w- was it a pain to have you know Pennsylvania Avenue or you know Broadway or whatever closed down? Yeah, heck yeah, it was. But and it's going to happen here on Main Street, and it's going to be a pain. And but, but I, at the end of the day, yeah, it'll be a, a, a it's huge. It'll be a huge project. It yeah. and it'll be and I know um, they are working to to be able to mitigate those things. And like I said, Wellston did, did I think a pretty good job in trying to mitigate that. There were folks that took a lot longer to get their water back than others, but uh, it was, it's it's an inconvenience (laughs) to say the least, but it's, it's a little bit of time for a great big picture. Uh, And with the the safety aspect of the Columbia gas lines, I mean, Oh, so um, 20 years ago we were Columbia gas has been very diligent about how they map things. Well, Sometimes things are so old that they're still not even on their maps. Correct. Um, and you go to dig what you think is a safe place for a water line, and all of a sudden, Surprise! Um, emergency, uh, stop, <laughs> turn off all the engines. <laughs> yeah. um, and so you come in, and but having all that marked, having these newer uh, medium pressure lines instead of this, this lower pressure stuff that can't serve as many people. Sure. Um, it, it's, it's one of those things that's a huge help. And for Columbia Gas, trying to deal with them on uh, commercial projects, they've got a large lead time to get some of these things upgraded because if I've got somebody that needs um, a million cubic feet of uh, gas Mm -hmm. um, a month compared to a a standard residential user, well, how how long is it going to take them to upgrade that line? How far do they have to run that line to do that? Um, and that's not an easy task. Yeah. And like with water, same sort of thing. I mean, you can have a water line or a sewer line that is here, but if you're adding on 50, 60, 70 houses, how does that, how does that affect things? Or if you're the sixth sense brewing and have to put in a sprinkler system (laughs) and, and have the water service that can do that or have a grease trap. To, yeah, <laughs> which is a whole other story that I'm not going to get into today. Um, but no, we had ended up having to tap into the main line because we needed a four inch water line just for our sprinkler system. Your your one in your house is probably one inch or somewhere around yeah. that vicinity. We needed a four inch. Well, there's not a lot of places in the, you know, you've got to tap into a main, right? And uh, so, yeah, that was an adventure, yeah, to say the least. And you've got to dig up city streets and you've got to do all of this stuff and you have to coordinate all of this. And it's it's hard. And it takes time. And, and it takes time and money. Yeah, it takes time and money. <laughs> well, and it's that's one a of whole other story, that, but... I mean, sometimes people are like, oh... Why, why don't we know about this or why hasn't this happened yet or why hasn't or why do they need this grant Cause, money because it's not easy and, and it's, it takes a yeah. lot of people working together to do a lot of these projects and, and just like some of these projects I mean they took years to clean up mm-hmm. and then sometimes when, when things sell it takes time for for things to happen I mean well I think the like, meridian plant is a great example yeah. of that of um I mean it sat there and sat there and sat there and it couldn't be marketed because there was some cam- contamination issue and it, and it took a long time and it the amount of stuff that had to leave that site uh, when people 
look back at it and see what actually had to happen and how much had to leave and how much. Yeah. And when you have stuff that is contaminated, it's got to go to a special site. It's got to go be transported in a special way. And it's not cheap to, <laughs> to get rid cheap. of that stuff. It's not easy. And so. again, it takes a lot of entities working together to make that kind and of. And with that, there were several folks that had to come together to make it happen. Yes. And w even with that, there were some folks that um, thankfully um, are very fond of Jackson County that had to help encourage things to, to move along. Sure. Um, to make things happen. So, and. We'll see. You know, I think, um, and I was going to ask you this a while back when we first started talking, but I feel like for the first time in my life, and maybe this isn't fair, but first time that I can remember, let's put it that way, and you and I are kind of the same age, so I feel like we have such great advocates here um, in economic development, and even all the way up to the governor's office in Columbus and whatever when, you know, they, it's like for the first time that I can remember, we're being noticed down here. Yeah, it, and I don't know what happened <laughs> other than just having the right people in the right jobs or having, you know, people in Columbus that actually realize that we're here. I don't know what happened. Maybe you know, but we're getting stuff happening down here that, that and getting noticed and recognized. Yeah, part of it is... Help. I think is one is the right people at the right time. Um, we have people in positions that have worked their tail off for years and realize um, what Appalachia is capable of. Yeah. And the type of people that we have here. We have phenomenal people here. Uh, I feel like before everyone thought we were a big bunch of dumb, dumb, lazy, dumb, dumbs. It, it's like, the, really? I the, mean, I think that's what they thought at, at different points. It's like, Oh, you're from Appalachia. So you ran around barefoot and yeah. Like you're, you, you can't you even spell your, your own name. How, how do you have all your own teeth? Right. It's like, and, and that, like that, that is that's the, what we are thought of. That's the, the poor perception that's out there. And we have had people that, and it, it, we've got people in our own community that don't realize the impact that we've had. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got multiple admirals who have come from Jackson County. We've got folks who have been in our legislature, have ran uh, state-level offices. We have folks who have run uh, or have been major in parts of major commercial companies na on a nationwide level. Yep. And people are like, well, well it's just Wellston or it's or we're just Jackson County. And it's like, do you realize that without Jackson County, so many of the things that have happened in our nation wouldn't have happened? Um, the coal that, that came from, from our region, the salt that came from Jackson County. I mean, right. we were one of the reasons why this area was so um, embraced and why our first capital was in Chillicothe, because it was a day's ride to hear so that they could collect the tax revenue um, in regards to the salt. And without that salt, we wouldn't have been able to uh, prosper as we did. Sure. Um, so and then we went into the, the iron and, and then the, the big iron, the iron and all, and of all that. that. And Jackson County iron created, helped create old iron sides. Right. And people were like, well, what? what's that? Okay. So here's another history. So, and then that whole thing. And how do we teach our kids that, you should have pride in what you have here because we've had such an impact. Um, I mean, on, on the Wellston side of things, Harvey Wells, I mean, had tried to do some of the work that he did in Wellston, had tried it here first. The founding fathers in Jackson were like, eh, we're not sure. So he went and was able to, to purchase property in Wellston and was able to, to make a huge impact. And that rail line, I mean, that Beltway rail line that went from uh, Wellston to Jackson so that workers could get to job sites as that coal belt moved from Wellston all the way to Jackson. Mm -hmm. And they were able to make it easier and they were able to help make a better work day and make it, and keep people from having to move with sure. on down the line so that they could get to work every day. Because it used to be you went to work. I, I worked in the, the mines in Wellston, so I lived in Wellston. Well, the, if that mine moved, then I had to move. Well, now they didn't have to do that. Yeah. That makes so, total sense. And we had folks that were able to do mm -hmm. amazing things. Um, and 
hopefully we we will uh, with going back to tourism real quick is use that as a component to not necessarily only draw people here but to educate our own community about what we can do and what how, we how awesome we are you know look at all of the you know Hayden's in high school he's a senior uh, over there and I'm sure that there's lots of kids in the class. Um, you know, we've had tons and tons of kids from the county going to Ivy League schools. We've had, you know, just because you live here doesn't mean that, that you don't have a future and opportunities. Right. I mean, and you, it's unbelievable. The sky's the limit. It doesn't matter. And we have so much opportunity. We've got with the amount of fiber that is now in our area. Um, so with remote work opportunities, we're trying to hopefully, they call them the, the boomerang uh, folks. We're trying to get folks back sure. that um, are uh, some of those folks who have gone to, to bigger schools or are doing bigger jobs and say, hey, we need you to help us to continue to show the kids here what we can do, what, what right. opportunities you have. And we have folks that um, have been born here, raised here, have gone off to college and then come back mm -hmm. and are, have made huge impacts. Um, I mean, we've got one that, with his job um, at Ohio Southeast, was able to help um, a oh large number of folks with yes. the work that, that he did. And I'm not going to call him out by name because I don't want to embarrass him or draw attention. Um, we know who you are. Yeah, well, Sam would do it in a heartbeat. I'm not throwing you under the bus. <laughs> um, we've got one who is working in neighboring Gallia County and the work that he's doing. And I am just... I mean, I know the quality of, of people that we have. I know the heart of the people that we have. And I know yeah. that um, with this myriad of projects that we're working together and trying to get all these parts to work together, we can, we can make this um, a place where people realize, hey, I love it here. I want to make sure I stay here. Um, and let's see what else we can do to make it better. Well, I think, you know, we all just, uh, you know, went through this whole global pandemic BS that we all lived through or some, unfortunately not so much, but that neither here nor there, but um, there were so many people that migrated from the big cities that were just fed up because they were stuck inside and they were around so many people. And they're like, man, you guys are living, you know, down in this beautiful area where you can go out and take walks and, walk outside and you have a yard and whatever. And we had a lot of people realizing that, I think, during that time that they're like, you know, I wouldn't mind just living down there and commuting or working from home where a lot of people are, are doing now. Well, and we've got um, multiple groups that are working at uh, looking at what co-working space uh, yes. options there are and things of that nature and how do we how do we make this happen? Um, uh, if... <laughs> ACGP, uh, the Appalachian Community Grant Program, um, can pan out. I mean, there are a couple programs and a couple opportunities for the county that I think um, will be game changers in regards to what we can uh, provide, but also um, how we can show off everything that we are. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think that's going to be – that'll be phenomenal – with the amount of requests that were put in for the amount of money that was there, yes. um, there's going to be a, a lot of folks just who are disappointed. Make it happen, but yeah. So, and so uh, Lydia Mahalik was, was here um, at our reception at the end of yes. January, and um, she told us four to six weeks then. So we're looking at the end of this month, the 1st of March. So we're getting closer, um, and so that's one of those things that um, – it's it's nice to um, have folks like that that understand what we're doing down here yes. uh, and, and appreciate it. And yeah, she, she I have to be uh, I'm I'm astounded at how she's been here multiple times uh, dealing with things. Uh, she's come to to look at several of our businesses, and I mean she was impressed that because that day she went on, also went on a tour before mm -hmm. the reception and something that was a hidden gem uh, up in Oak Hill that a lot of folks don't know about. And so she, 
she was impressed and was like, we need to make sure that we're, we're staying on top of this because they're going somewhere. Right. Um, and when you have the head of a state agency that's here in Jackson County talking about that. And that's, is impressed? Yeah. And, and cool. Uh, we've, we've, knocked, we've knocked her socks off a, a few times with the projects that we've got going on. So that's one of the things that we want to make sure that we uh, continue to do to show how, um, how beneficial we can be, not only to our county, but to our region and to our state. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. And all of this, again, ties back to, to the, <laughs> the land, land bank. bank. Sorry. <laughs> but no, that's exactly right. So I heard you on the radio talking about, uh, with Matt and Josh, about, you know, different properties. There are, you know, many properties out there that people either have that are, you know, in disrepair or maybe they have, they don't need, or they've inherited it, or, you know, it's just, they don't need all this land or whatever. So yeah, we've actually um, have two different uh, families right now that uh, were like, hey, we inherited this. Uh, we um, really want one of our families three states away. The other two of us, we've got our stuff. Uh, we really don't want to deal with this. We've got, the pro- we've got the taxes paid up on it. We just want to donate this to the land bank. How can we do this? Um, and I was surprised at how shockingly simple it can be. Really? <laughs> so it's Deed one of it over. <laughs> so, and that's and really that's it. I mean Find a piece of paper. They will they they've got a to file um to uh, do a, a part so that they can have that estate taken care of and then they go over and then they do a simple deed in regards to to that property and it's and it's done. But, you know, you think about how game-changing that is as well, and you mentioned this when we first started talking, is, you know, maybe you take that property and then maybe you all are able to to build an affordable home on it so that somebody who's been renting all their life perhaps can afford to buy house, their sorry. their own home and live that American dream that that everyone, you know, so wants to well, do. And depending on the house, I mean, sometimes these houses are you can go in and, and maybe um just gut it and do a renovation. Um if if, er, if the foundation and everything's fine and allows us to do it at an even cheaper level. Okay. And be able to to make it even more affordable. And so that's one of the things is we're we want to make sure that we can do this as affordably as we can. So um, sometimes we don't even have, we may not even have to demolish the house, depending on it. Some of them are in much more disrepair, and it's not that's not going to be feasible to just do that. So um, we will have to to look through those by a case by case basis. But um, but the opportunity is going to is be there. there, right? And that is huge. Now, what about the, so? Let's talk about residential versus commercial. Okay. Um, when you talk about uh, this land, you know, in the land bank, can they they work toward both residential and commercial? Yeah, we can do commercial or residential properties. Um, so in the second phase of the 2023 money, uh, we've got um, three residential properties in the mix and then the rest, or sorry, three commercial properties in that mix and the rest um, are going to be all residential properties. Now, how difficult is that for them to go back and forth? You know, can you take a commercial property and then turn, you know, divide it up and turn it into some residential or is that the goal or? Well, it, with that, it's going to depend on um, the land use for um, the communities where, where they're located. Um, so with, where both of the other ones are, it's going to be, it'll have to come back commercial only uh, with, with where they are unless they ended up doing something that's multi-level and they do a mixed use. Um, which is allowable in in most of, of those areas. So, like you would have a business on the first floor and, and so, apartments on the second floor. And so, number one, you're seeing that in a lot in downtown areas, um, where there's a storefront in the bottom of the building. These downtown buildings, then someone there's residential living up above, mm-hmm. which makes total sense because you can't really have a commercial spot on the top of a building unless you put an elevator in or or whatever (laughs) escalator or whatever um but yes so if you go to the big city for example in columbus you see all of these ginormous buildings being built and most of them have storefronts on the bottom and then residential on the top above it and And mixed use because we live here in jackson doesn't mean you can't think that well, big city way because it makes sense they're doing it for a reason yeah. well and we've been talking and doing this for 
a couple decades now um, and hasn't been as prevalent here, mm -hmm. but it's becoming more and more prevalent because it makes sense. Uh, it, it's well, a better use of the property. It's a, it's a way to make sure a greater percentage of the property is actually um, benefiting, one, the owner, but also the community. Well, it's way easier to go up than yeah. out. You know, we don't make much more land, so <laughs> we can't really create that. Yeah. So yeah, you we're can not go much. up. <laughs> and, and, and so if it's there, I mean, like I said, that's, those are some things that, that uh, can truly be helpful to us. I've noticed a lot of um, people really, really gravitating more. So when Jamie and I first moved back here, all we wanted to do was live out of town and have our own like little sanctuary out, you know, and, and now it seems like more people are gravitating back into living in town where things are walkable and convenient and whatever. So that's kind of been a, a push as well. Yeah, can I'm, I'm can I walk to a restaurant? Can I walk yeah. to get a cup of coffee? I just want to go walk, walk to the gym, whatever. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and, and it's, we're seeing more and more of that. It, uh, I mean, if we look at some of our bigger communities, what Cleveland has been able to do with some of their extremely dilapidated areas, they turn those into mixed use properties. And with that, uh, it has been a game changer there. Sure. Um, because of what they've been able to do, they've allowed more walkability. When you look at our millennials and, and younger, that's it's they like that because they have that sense of community. Um, they have that ability to stay active. And um, they're not hoarders like we are. Yeah. <laughs> our generation is a bunch of hoarders, and we want a lot of stuff. They don't want a lot of stuff. They want to experience life. Yeah. They, yeah. It's a whole different mindset, and that's. And, and if we can have that marketability where, hey, we've got these places where you can live, uh, where you can work, and do this all within a place where you can walk from, Yes. why not try to, to do something like that? Um, it's, it makes your life more enjoyable. You don't have to have as much stuff and clutter, um, and you don't have to drive as much. I mean, when you look at insurance, fuel prices, things of that nature, right. um, and w the way our communities are, are laid out, we have the ability to do that. Um, like I said, we ha and then if you want more space, you have that, we have that ability outside as well. So, um, and no, we're not, we're not ever making any new space. We've got what we've got. So we've got, uh, yeah. land doesn't just multiply. <laughs> and so one of the, I mean, so on, on the economic development side, just like we don't have, um, the, the property that a lot of folks are looking at 500, 800, a thousand, um, acres for that's all flat, not our rolling hills. To, it, to our put beauty is also to our detriment, right? When it comes <laughs> so to that, on some of the economic sides, it can be it can be a little tougher for us to, to yeah. sell um, sell some of our aspects. So, but if we can do some of the, the smaller auxiliary pieces that go to that, yes. we've got properties where we can do that and we can make that happen. Our biggest problem there is: do we have sewer service and enough? water or gas the infrastructure service. and right. so working on that long-term plan gives us the ability to to make a huge difference so um and then with the land bank we've we've tried to update um, the website we've tried to make our forms a whole lot easier mm -hmm. um so like if you go to our, our website um jackson co land bank or we jackson county land bank dot dot org um, you can go on there and you can see where you can click on the form. You can go in and you can fill it out right there, or you can click to a link and get a, a web fillable one. So you can do that, okay. print it off. And uh, we have notaries at our office, so you can just bring it right in and there's no cost to, to have it notarized for you. Or if you know someone or if you want to pay to have it notarized and then mail it to us, you can do that as well. So we're trying to get folks to realize, hey, we're here, we can do this. And, and we'll work through you, work you through the process. Uh, we've had a few folks that have come in and said, well, I'm not really sure how to do this, or my handwriting's really bad. Can you help me? Um, so, yep. I, I <laughs> so we've had that as well. And I've sat there right in our office, um, went to the web fill before them, and they, we walked through it with them to, to kind of help, uh, help them through the process. You know, and, and that's the, the whole thing of why your office is so cool is that you all do a little bit of everything, <laughs> um, to say the least, but actually a lot of everything. <laughs> that was a bad choice of words. No, we do a lot of everything. But yeah. But uh, so with the land bank, um, you know, maybe you have that property that you were like back to 
you know, you inherited it or you just have own, or an owner of a property or you're like, listen, I can't afford to take care of this home anymore. I can't, um, you know, I can't afford to tear it down. Um, I know I'm in trouble because it's <laughs> falling down. Yeah. Um, what do I do? And maybe contact your office yeah. then. Re- and reach out to our office. Um, Jackson, that's why they're here. Yeah, Jackson CEO Land Bank at gmail.com. You can email us directly. Okay. Um, we're on Facebook as well. Um, so like I said, yeah, if you just search Jackson County Land Bank, you're going to, you're going to pull us up in one of our multiple ways to get a hold of us, whether it's the website, Facebook page or whatever. That's right. And hopefully we have some more money to, to help more folks out. Yeah. And like I said, those properties we, up. we, and, and this grant needs to be done. We need to have it. Sub- the next grant for our 24 money has to be submitted by April 1st. So, uh, I'm, I'm only... Oh, at maybe a dozen. I need uh, those properties pretty quick because we need to get those done so that we can submit uh, and have it ready. And this time, it's a we su- what we submit the first time is pretty much what we're going to get uh, money wise. So they're this is the last round of money that they're giving us. The state's giving us in relation to this because they've done this. This will be the fourth year. Okay. Um, so they're like. We think that this is that we've given everybody the ability to start. Well, um, Jackson County Land Bank has not charged anything in the past uh, for these demolitions. Um, we haven't required that anybody relinquish their pop- property or anything like that. So we're not a- asking you, forcing you to relinquish your property at all. But if you if you want to donate it. That that's, was going to be my next that's question. That's something that you can do. Can you get um, help but still keep your property? Right. Um, now, so with this round, there's going to be some sort of, of match that the okay. landowner is going to have to do. Uh, the board is still trying to verify that, and I think they're going to verify that at our next board meeting uh, so we can determine uh, what that level of help is because we want to be able to perpetuate this piece of it and to be able to help people in the future. So by doing that, we want to be able to, to continue that part uh, as well as the part where we're going to continue to uh, build homes and help revitalize our neighborhoods. Man, I'm just going to tell you, um, building these homes, I mean, you ask anybody, I can't tell you how many people I've had call me crying because they're, you know, they need somewhere to live. They don't have anywhere to go, like, because we have some rental properties and I'm like, they're all full. Like I, yeah. and we just don't have enough housing here, strangely enough. Yeah, there is not there is not a vacancy rate. <laughs> no, uh, it, it's it's not and, at all. And so, um, and because of that, I mean, that's helped to. I mean, that's eased those prices up because they're at a premium right now. So yeah. the more that we can do, we can help ease that and hopefully help make um, make a difference for everybody in the county. That would be great. Uh, affordable homes for for folks would be an amazing. Amazing thing. Yeah, so we've got a couple properties that we're trying to figure out how to lay them out here in Jackson um, eventually. And with um, their locations, they, they offer some some unique opportunities, So, uh, but we have some unique challenges with them, so we're trying to figure out how to, how to work through those. And sure. uh, we've got a few properties. Nothing's prop- easy. If oh. it was easy, everybody would do it, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a few properties that we're not quite sure where they are, um, because, uh, <laughs> if anybody ever looks on the auditor's website, sometimes you get a diamond or a, a, a pyramid that's there. Um, and they, they're not exactly sure where to put, th- where that actually fits into the scheme of things. We've got, um, 10 <laughs> acres out on Monroe hollow, but it's a pyramid. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're working with, a, a an area, um, surveyor so that we can try to figure out exactly what is there. Which by the way. Good luck, you know, getting because they're so busy. <laughs> yes, they are. If anybody wants to, yeah, go to school to be a surveyor. I'd You'll recommend stay busy. that. Yeah, yeah, he would stay busy. <laughs> he will stay busy. Uh, and, and so that's one of the things is so we, we've got a lot of challenges, a lot of things that um, we're definitely trying to move forward on, and that I think we can make a huge difference with. So um, there's a lot of a lot of reasons to be uh, positive on Jackson County with what's been going on with um, economic development, with our tourism board, with our land bank. I mean, and so many other things. Our, our businesses are, are, are working very hard to, to do things. And again, it's one of those things that some people are frustrated because they don't see it, and so they think nothing's happening. Or it's not happening fast enough. It's not happening fast enough for them, but 
especially in the world we're in where interest rates have gone up where they are. um, And cost of building things are sky high. So, I mean, we've got a project that initially was going to be, um, what was it? I think it was supposed to be like $1.1 million to to build this project. Well, now it's $2.4 million. (laughs) And so you had funding lined up for this, but by the time that you got ready to bid it, Mm -hmm. uh, everything went on its head and well, that now or you're making up that money. You know, I, I understand because when we started our renovation project, interest rates are at 2%. And then the next thing you know, in a matter of a couple of months, they're at seven and 8%. And you're like, Oh, Oh, that hurts. That, <laughs> it's okay. Like, but, but no, and it's not whining about that. It's the reality of what yeah. people are dealing with. And, um, so if you wonder sometimes why things move slowly, Maybe they're waiting yeah. for the interest rates to drop. Maybe they're waiting for cost of materials to drop. Maybe I mean, there's all kind yeah. of different I mean, factors and, involved. And we've seen a little bit of lowering and steadying with, with some of the material rates. Yes. Um, they've we not, saw that over our project yeah. time. And yeah. They have not gone back down to pre-pandemic levels. But um, much better but yeah. than they were. But they are far better than what they were. So yeah. we're, we're hoping that that'll help a couple of our projects that are that are moving forward. And um so, so tell us that. about some of the projects. So uh, some very interesting projects. <laughs> That's about all I can say. I, I told my husband last night we were driving back from Athens. I'm like, I'm so going to put him on the spot, and he's so going to blow me off. And I'm going to, yep. I, we uh, and, and it's funny. I mean, there are things that are out there. And can we, you give us any hints of anything? We know that. Come on, things spill the tea. Have happened, and we know that certain companies have. Um, gotten contractors, and we've had contractors say, hey, we got these bid specs. Um, what do you know about it? And it's like, we know a, exactly what you just gave us because we're not in that side of the loop, but we're waiting for that formal announcement for a couple of folks. And okay, I think that we have got a very interesting um, few months ahead of us where I think we're going to have a couple projects come to to fruition uh, be at, at once. Um, some things have been done, not under the radar, but just not a lot of publicity in, in regards to them. So um, there will be some things are like, well, I didn't even know they were doing something, or oh, I didn't know that was a project, or things of that nature. I mean, we had I mean, we brought in eighteen million dollars uh, worth of investment last year, but that's not always something that that people see, mm-hmm. um, and. That's a lot. I mean, and with like Sam does our BRNEs, which are business retention and, and expansion projects. Uh-huh. And so he will, he'll come out and he goes and talks to folks. Um, Ohio Southeast talked about the ones that they did. Well, we did far more than what Ohio Southeast counted, but it's they only counted the ones that relate to their metrics. Right. Um, sure. And so we're out talking to folks that sometimes it's only one, two, five, or five jobs. But, but those, those one, two, up. or five jobs add up. Yeah. Uh, and those inv- some of the investments may have only been um, a hundred thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but that's still one hundred fifty thousand dollars in investment in our county. Well, and and here's how I look at at that too. You need all kinds. So you like you need you know. Oh yeah, we're getting a big plant coming in. Just I'm not saying that. I'm just saying as an example, and it's going to be five hundred jobs. Cool. But if that plant leaves, then so do the 500 jobs. So if you have, you know, these uh, smaller projects where they are five or 10 or 15 jobs, then if you have several of those, then those add up. Yeah, they add up, you know, and can add up to the same amount of money, but they're not so devastating if one leaves or moves or, or whatever, too. Well, and when people look at in the U S economy, small businesses make up the vast majority of jobs that are actually out there. You just don't hear about it. And it's, they're not as glamorous. Gla- yeah, there we go. They're not as glamorous. They're not the ones that, that it's get not Amazon. All, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It's not the Honda plant, which I mean, would have been great to have here, but we didn't have a thousand acres of flat land. Sure. So, um, but we can serve as that bedroom community. That's going to be able to serve, some of those very high paying jobs that are within that 90 minute circle. Well, you look at that Intel plant, for example, and, and, you know, I have a really good friend that's a kind of a 
big time realtor up in Columbus. And she called me one day and she was like, man, this Intel thing. She's like, you guys just hold on to your rear ends because it's going to come your way. Yeah. And she's like, I just got out of a meeting where I just had no idea the impact that this thing was going to make. And, you know, there will be people that would rather live in a community like ours and drive than live in the big city. Right. They can hop right on 35 and scoot right up. I mean, you can shoot but up 93. Also, those are some major big paying jobs. Yes. Um, the amount of money that is coming into our region um, and how that can affect us in different ways. I mean, and I think that um, when we start to look at what we have and what we have to offer, we can do some great things. Yep. But we also need housing for folks. And that's... <laughs> and we need all the nice things, too. So we need to have the utilities that we can... I mean, is somebody going to build a new um, subdivision? Is somebody going to build... Or a new condo. A uh, new set of thing. condos. That would be yeah. great. So what are those opportunities? And, and that's one of the, actually one of the things the land bank has looked at is we put out a couple of different things to the board members. Hey, here are some different things. One of the set was um, condos. Do we want to look at being able to put up a set of three to five condos where you can have it I'm on one you. piece of property and it's less for somebody to have to, to maintain, yep. um, but it's still something that they have it that can be their own, that they can live in and own and be able to work from. And again, I think that comes as generational as well, um, where I think some of the folks, well, even our age, but like younger, aren't into maintaining the property. Like, I don't want to go out and mow the grass. I would rather go to the movies instead. <laughs> or I don't want to have to put a new roof on this thing because of whatever, you know, let, I still own this thing, but the condo association is going to pay for the new roof and the mowing of the grass and all that. So, yeah. you know, it, that's a really good, like happy medium. I feel like yeah, my house was built in 1894, I believe. <laughs> and so it has unique Just issues. A few years ago, a few years ago, we even call that older charm, than me. John, <laughs> older than me. Um, so the floors are a little crooked. It's charming. And it's like some of them squeak once in a while. Yeah. Um, but, it's one of those things that it can be a lot some days. Um, and so that's yeah. one of the things to think about. And I've got one child who's off to college now. Um, and I've got one more that has only got about another year to go. And so we think about, he's already said, I think I want to do this. And so he's going to be gone at least for, for a few years with the route that he wants to take. So yep. um, what do we do then when we have, a three bedroom house. That ginormous house. Is with... 2,200 square feet or 2,300 yeah. square feet or whatever. So it's like, okay. Um, and I'm not getting any younger. And <laughs> some some of my body parts don't work the way they do. So <laughs> will stairs always be the answer? Yeah. So, um, and that's, so that's one of those things that at some point I'll have to, to figure out and say, hey, what do I do at that point? So do I get, get go smaller? And, and how do we do that for the rest of our community? Yeah, and I think that, that you know, uh, number one, affordable living is such a main goal, um, and the land bank can help with that. Um, there's so many other opportunities out there that can help with that, and that's obviously our co whole point today while we digressed all over the place. <laughs> we bounced around, sorry. But it was a lot of fun because we can talk about how it all ties together, and then the fact that our future is very bright down here. Extremely bright. I mean, don't have... We might want to wear shades. Yes. <laughs> yes, all of that. And if you're old enough to remember that, that joke. <laughs> you're our that. age. <laughs> That's good. Well, very good. Well, John, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. It, it was It's always fun talking with you, no matter what hat you have on. <laughs> and um, will you be back tomorrow? <laughs> um, not tomorrow, but I think I'll be back in about two weeks. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we look forward to it. So... All right. Well, and if you have any questions about economic development or anything like that, what's the best way for people to contact um, you? You can call us at 740-286-2838. Uh, um, so 740-286-2838. Or um, you can uh, email uh, john.stabler at jacksoncountyohio.com. And uh, I'll do my best to help out. Or if you have uh, land bank questions, jacksoncolandbank at gmail.com. Um, or you can uh, reach out to us on our social media. Uh, we're on Facebook for both of those. We also have, um, I know I've got 
Instagram. So uh, Jack's or what is it? John's Tabler O H on Instagram. So hey, listen, um, try to they're not our, hard to find. We're, we're trying to make it easier for folks to find us and to to reach out. Um, trying to do a little more. Uh, promotion of some of our, our local businesses and things of that nature. So mine tends to either be outdoors or food. I apologize. <laughs> two, of, two of my favorite things. I like food. So hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Thanks again for spending your morning with us. Come back anytime you have something new to like, you know, something you can announce. Something maybe we can announce. Um, Would be more, great. More on tourism. I mean, yes. Um, All of there that. actually might be somebody in this building that does a little bit with tourism too that you know, we might bring over. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.